Welcome back to the channel and thank you for tuning in to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles. I am super excited for a couple of reasons. Mainly one reason. I am going to start working on my original motor that started me in this whole rabbit hole down to craziness. As always, if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe and the little bell notification. Uh, if you could, more than anything, drop me a line down in the comments. I appreciate that a lot because I just enjoy talking to everybody. Also, if you could, go over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group and join that. It is absolutely free and you can keep the conversation going. You can also uh, message me on Messenger, uh, all kinds of stuff because, you know, Facebook is just convenient. Also, link to everything will be down in the description. So, what do we have going on? Well, I want to get the degree wheel set up on it. I want to get the port numbers. Now, I have the port numbers for this. You guys already saw it. the lining shot. It's not building any compression. I thought I took it off of Heather's make running. And then I looked at some old videos and I realized that Heather had broken it also. So I took it off because she broke it. Even though I ran it with... 20 million miles Heather rode it once and destroyed it so now I cannot find this exact cylinder to replace it this is a one-piece jug I really wanted to keep this but I could not find a single piece jug anywhere now I'm going to have to swap this to a two-piece jug but I gotta say the actual machine work on this phenomenal now there is no dome and I've never seen a 50 cc with a dome but look how nice the machine work is on the piston on the head itself cylinder looks phenomenal even the transfers they look great cylinder walls look amazing I i'm really happy with the product that they gave me so what we're going to do is we're going to take this off something i didn't think about and now i am thinking because it's actually in front of my face i don't have head studs this has has just tiny little bolts that you know go directly into the cylinder and down into the case so i'm actually going to have to get threaded rod to make it work which is not a horrible problem but but if i do remember correctly i think it was this one is actually stripped so we're going to take this off my main thing is i want to see how the stroke is and i want to see if everything basically just bolts right up and i can switch this over to the new setup so I don't know if I can, I'm going to just bolt it up, get the degree wheel on, and we're going to start checking stuff. But no matter what, this will have to get ported, but I can't do any porting until I know what the numbers are. Uh, yes, I used to just grind away, and it was what it was, but now that I actually have a degree wheel and can pretend to be slightly intelligent, I would prefer to do that. And we need to make this happen fairly quickly because I need to get to building the... Frankensteins. I know Kevin is working on uh, Husk Husqvarna. I'm assuming by the time he gets that done, I should have both of mine built and on bikes. It's a joke, Kevin. Calm down. You're just slightly slow and it's driving me nuts because I really want to see the thing move. I said it. Sorry. I am literally just getting into this right now. The motor itself is still nice and clean. You know, I had taken it off. You saw it, but this is a number three piston, so it's the same piston as the one I got. So I want to take the rings off and just slide that on and see how we look. So because we don't have a head on that one, it's going to be much easier to get all the numbers and just to get a general, you know, idea of how everything looks. Something I was thinking about doing and probably still will. I'm thinking about, not right now. Oh, oh, that was lovely. Good job, Johnny. Yeah, that's a lot of fuel. I'm expecting that to happen. That's okay. Now the tape is clean. Look how shiny. Okay, anyway. All right, I'm not gonna have to break this all the way down. Heather. What? I'm recording. Great, thanks. Was it me? 
let's just take a gander. Okay, there is no base gasket in it, so we gotta put it, we gotta get studs so we can do it the right way, but I, I might, I'm gonna take the coil off. If I can run this with no base gasket, I'm going to run it with no base gasket, but I gotta be able to crank it down, bolt it down, you know, really seat it just to get the numbers, period. And I gotta check squish. Side note, for the two new motors that are coming up, I'm gonna put on the YD bottom ends. I have, this one I can see it slightly, but I know that the cranks I'm gonna use, they're not balanced, which I will be balancing them, first time ever. And they're also not put together straight. They have a slight, you know, wobble, which I'm going to try to rectify. And I think I'm gonna make my own separator. They, they are pressed together, so it's a lot of force to get them apart. I, someone recommended using, I think, a sledgehammer. I don't think I'm going to go that route because I don't think that is a viable way to do it. I do have an idea on how to do it mechanically, so that's going to be my goal because I really want to make sure that the crank that goes into the two chainsaw motors is exceptionally good. I need to go to Home Depot, so I got to get new threaded rod, new, you know, cylinder head studs. Looking to my right, the reflection of the bike in the window of the building next to me. And I gotta say, she's a slick looking bike when she's rolling. Wish I get one of those 360 cameras because then you could see it. I think it looks kind of cool. But you know, I'm completely impartial to my decision making on that because you know, I got no stake. No stake in the game? No egg in the game? I don't know. What do you got in the game? You got no leg in the game? No. <laughs> when I come to Home Depot, this is what I usually do. I just strap around uh, the cable at the barbecues. But anyway, Iron Horse had some good info on how to address bottom end torque and top end torque. You know, chainsaws are looking for top end torque with a larger case volume. But since these are single speed bikes and me personally always looking for, you know, off the line speed, you need to get a much smaller crankcase volume. I am definitely going to be playing around with that. I know this one revs to the moon, but doesn't have the best bottom end, but once you get it going, man, it sings. And I know for a fact that this has a very large case volume in it. Once I get the chainsaw built, I might bring this motor back on the stand and play with it some more. All right, let's go look for this threaded rod. Okay, hardware section. Where's my bolt? I well, highly doubt I'll be able to find the same thread that I have to special order that, which I am not going to do. But I do think I could re-tap the threads. The only issue I might have at that point is I'm basically going to be cross-threading what's there. Now I can drill a little deeper in all the holes, or I could always start with this motor with the aluminum fill and drill new holes completely which is a possible option 
Um, if I had a die set, I would just buy threaded, uh, like just regular straight rod and thread rod myself with my threads, but I don't have that option because I don't have that much, that big of a set. This would be pretty much the size I would need. How long is this? 24 inches, and I was four and a half, so say five, five times four is 20, so I'd have four inches. This would be big, more than enough. The next size up is the red one, which is about standard case size. And I'll be honest with you, I did not try to put it through the case and I could drill it out to fit. I might also just do that. I'm gonna have to call Heather and see. Let me call her up real quick and ask her. No, just looking around. Hey, I need you to do me a favor. I didn't think to do it before I left. Y yeah, that will work. It might be my reception. The new one on my desk. It's right on my desk. Well, there's only one new one on the desk. I want to see it in front of the camera and see how big it is, that stud going into the head or the cylinder itself. I don't care, whatever. It doesn't fit, obviously, but... Okay, get my caliper. It's if you had to put a measurement to it. But Heather, put the bolt like this and pinch it. Yes, just like that, exactly. Okay, there's a little line. Count how many lines it is. Oh man, now I am thinking about completely drilling it out and tapping. It wouldn't matter if I drill it out, but if I drill the cylinder out to accept the bigger studs, I don't need this and I don't need to fill it. I just need to drill it. And honestly, one of the bolts in the case is already a problem. Upsizing would be good or cleaning and filling it would be good. I think that's my only options. Where is plumbing? Well, they got nothing. No map gas at all? Holy crap. Okay guys, well, that was honestly a bust. They don't have any map gas. I think I'm kind of SOL. I think my only option is going to be drilling out the cylinder and head to accept the head studs and bolts and retap in the case, which ain't a huge deal. It cooled down a lot more than I thought. nothing good so the only other option I really have at that point then is I put in standard studs because I have extra studs so I took out a set of studs it's not that much of a difference so I'll have to drill out the head and the cylinder yes the new cylinder it almost fits into the cylinder uh, it's still gonna be plenty far away from the actual uh, cylinder wall and what have you that's what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm going to drill out the cylinder, the head, and said case. Okie dokie, guys. So, welcome back. It is day 57. I am still working on a 50cc here, obviously. That's why it's in the same video. Okay, so, we are upgrading 
two M8 studs. Uh, basically, standard stud in every 66 slash 80 cc iron sleeve yd 100s basically every motor except the 50s so i'm just going to drill out the stock holes i'm going to use a quarter inch drill bit i do not know if that's correct but it seems correct ish i don't have a metric set of drill bits it is cast aluminum so it should be okay when it comes time to actually drill out the cylinder and head i think i'm using 5 sixteenths because the 5 16 is a hair bigger than the M8. So, and now that I'm doing such a dramatic revamp basically of the motor by putting the bigger studs in and all that, I'm thinking about not using a base gasket. Most of my motors I redo, I, I try to eliminate gaskets wherever possible because it's another failure point. Every time you put another object into the motor, another piece into the puzzle, it is one more piece to possibly break or lose or screw up in one way. So I try to eliminate as many pieces as possible so that it's just one piece so only one thing can break, if that makes sense. So anyway, we're gonna drill it out, both sides, tap it, and hopefully be successful. If we are not successful, then we scrap the project and you never see this video. Okay, uh, guys, I'm going to make a conscious effort to not act like a two-year-old touching his first boob, okay? But I'm gonna make a conscious effort to at least show more of the actual work I'm doing. This little vise is a game changer. But I have these little more force. My drill bits are extremely dull. Just keep checking for your depth. They do put a depth finder on, you know, you could buy it for the bits not a big deal and to be honest if you go through it's not a big deal you could just seal it <sighs> guys now tools I have are real crappy tools like let's be serious but you don't need amazingly great tools to do anything I'm doing. I think I've made that super clear in all of my videos. Let's see how close we are. Oh, the holes are too big. Now this is the biggest issue. See here how close it is? This one's a little farther away from the edge than this one. Now it's not much, but it's every little bit counts. This one here is better all the way around. It's probably off ever so slightly, but it is what it is. We are going to start with the better one so we can get our confidence built up a little bit. Now, if for some reason this does not work and the only reason it wouldn't work is simply because the drill bit was not big enough, but you don't want it to be too big. You want it to be smaller so that your tap choose out whatever metal is not needed and makes proper threaded holes. Now when you're doing this guys, you just keep constant downward pressure. Do not wiggle. You just want to stay vertical with the hole you're doing and you want to go slow. Once you get it started, you don't have to worry about as much downward pressure. But this is aluminum. Continue pushing down and go slowly. Now, I already got at least two or three threads started. So I will go out and back in and make sure those threads are worked well. I do it slowly, guys. There's no rush. If you go back in too quickly and you mess up, you will cross thread your new threads. And yes, your new threads are, it's shallow at that point, but you don't want to have to lose those little bit of threads you just made. We are almost halfway, a little bit past halfway now with the threads and you can see they look pretty. Um, on average, the general consensus is you only need the depth for this to hold properly. For, the, the, so for this to be deep enough, you only need the width of the bolt thread count basically to be caught. 
so anything above that is an overachiever and good deal. Okay guys, just so you know, when you are doing this, okay, remember, your tap is hardened steel. Well, yours probably is, mine is probably mild spaghetti, but despite that fact, when you're taking it out, can catch other pieces of aluminum inside as you're taking it out and can mar up the threads and what have you, or it could just push against each other because on the way back out, it's still sharp metal on the other side of the flute, which is what cuts the threads. A word of advice is give a little upward tension as you twist it out, but not, not where you're actually lifting hard, just an upward force. Don't let the threads lean on the thread you just cut. Literally just enough where you're just, just touching so that it's not the weight of the tool. You want to take the weight of the tool off the threads. Just the weight of the tool. The tool weighs, you know, half a pound, something like that. That's all you want to do. Nothing else. And you're good. That will just in general help you with uh, keeping the threads being marred up. Now, like I said, we still have to chamfer the edge. But there you go. You got one threaded, one not threaded. See the size difference? Quarter inch hole for the M8. Um, it's slightly small for what I'm looking to do with these threads, but on the other hand, anything bigger in standard size would be too big and you wouldn't get proper th thread depth. And I don't mean depth down, I mean the actual size of the threads. So take your time and you could do it with whatever you have. Remember guys, it's all a learning process and nobody does it perfect the first time. I mean, except me, I, I did, but you know, not everyone can be like me, I don't want to tell you. All right guys, 